The Colorado Republican Party is looking to gain some ground at the state capitol by getting more women involved in the political process. A group of Republican women has started a new coalition to literally go out and knock on doors and reach out to swing voters. They call themselves Women in Action, and Christy Burton-Brown and Kathleen Chandler are both part of Women in Action. Christy's the vice chair of the Colorado GOP. Kathleen is with the Independence Institute. So thank you both for being here. We know that Democratic women have had some great success with, um, like, Emily's List and so forth. Is this what, what this is modeled after to some degree? Well, I mean, we're modeled after, there's a lot of different places, like Susan B. Anthony List is also a great sure. one on our side nationally. And the Republican Party in the state typically has a women's coalition, but this one goes beyond what we've typically had with actual action points and then also building the bench for future women candidates here in Colorado. So as you look at the electorate in Colorado, we're seeing more and more people unaffiliated. How, how do you get, I mean, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, how do you get those unaffiliated to, to uh, the Republican side? Well, I think, I think one thing we do is we really make this personal for people, not only in our messaging, and we talk about the stories of why, as a suburban mom, am I voting Republican in 2020? What does that matter for my family, my jobs, my kids? But I think we also give people ways to really engage. We actually have a National Week of Action going on right now um, in association with the Trump campaign and the RNC, and we're letting people get involved in their communities and their neighborhoods with the people they know, and so it's just giving people a chance to connect in politics instead of making this outside discussion. So talk about the priorities. Kathleen? Well, one of the things that I'm really excited about that um, through the Independence Institute, actually, we have a local government project where we um, help people, women, to get onto boards and commissions in their local government. We've determined that by being involved in your local politics, it's a greater, you have a greater impact than being, a, you know, just sitting around and complaining all the time. So the idea is to train women to get on these boards and commissions and then affect their communities. Because a lot of women don't understand that th these boards and commissions can affect your life tomorrow. You know, one day you might want to decide to put a garage here and your property and you apply to the zoning commission and the next day they tell you, oh no, we've moved the zoning, changed the zoning rules. Well, that's a volunteer board that applies, that can apply to where you're going to get that, that uh, garage on. And we, we figured we can house these people with on these boards and commissions and it'd be really effective. Uh, but when you think about, um, well, Congress or even local politics here, I mean, women have not had a, a major, I mean, it's male dominated, obviously. I mean, we haven't had even a, a female governor or a, a U.S. senator. I mean, how, how do you get women into the fold? How do you fight that, what has been the establishment for all these years? I think there's a few ways, and I love Kathleen's program. It's actually one of the reasons I'm heading up this coalition for our state party, but she's one of our founding members. And we have 20 women around the state who are founding members all across the state, different sectors, different um, success stories like Kathleen. And I think it's seeing other women lead that draws more women in. Mm -hmm. I know I talk to women around the state who say, I want to run for office, but in five or 10 years, maybe when my kids are a little older. And in the past, we've kind of said, okay, come back to us in five or 10 years. Right. Now, what we're saying is come to us now, we'll give you the skills, the training, and um, let you get engaged on these campaigns on the ground with what you're already good at. And then Kathleen has great places to plug them in now. Right, because we've seen success stories where women have gotten on some of these boards and commissions um, because maybe they have a, an idea about art in their community. And they're very involved in the art community as it is, but they would like to see how government can help fund that art so they get on their local art commission then they find out they really like being involved in government mm -hmm. and the next thing you know they've decided to run for city council so that's how we're getting them involved you know mm -hmm. I, I we we can't talk about the republican party without talking about the president and i know that one of the issues that i hear from a lot of women is how can women support president trump given some of the some of the issues the personal issues and some of the 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 words he chooses how do you respond to that sure. well I think one of the main reasons that I, as a woman and a mother of two children, support the president is because of his results. When you look at what, he's, what he and his administration and Senator Gardner, in cooperation with him, have done for women, we have the lowest unemployment, unemployment rates for women in the nation since the 1950s. Uh, jobs are exploding for women. Economic success. He supports educational choice for our children. That's another issue we're actually focused on in Women in Action is really broadcasting around the state where the Republican Party stands on education. Uh, we are offer a lot more choice, a lot more opportunity, and our candidates fight also for parental rights. And that reaches women. And, and I hear what you're saying. I think that some people see, I mean, in your mission statement, you say you believe in positive empowerment and for decent civility. 
And some would say that that doesn't necessarily align with some of the words and actions that we see coming out of the White House, Kathleen. Well, yeah, I mean, President Trump is going to be President Trump. We all knew what he was before he even was elected. I think we need to look past that and say his policies are empowering women. And that's what it's really about, is empowering women, uh, whether that's uh, financial empowerment that by having a good job or even just having a, a stronger voice within the um, government. I mean, President Trump has been appointing successful women in his cabinet and, and so forth. So I think we sometimes we get caught up in, in that verbiage and in reality we need to look at the results that have, have occurred. Although, there, uh, what then do you say to women who have been alienated by, by his words and actions? How do you, what, what do you say to them? Well, I, I think we tell them, we, we make it personal, the issues. I think you have to center around on issues because personalities can distract in politics. They really can. Um, we all know this. But I think when you zero in on the issues and you find out for a particular woman what issue matters to her. Is it her job? Is it her kids' education? Is it health care? And then what has President Trump done and what has the Republican Party done that centers on that issue that matters to her? And we make it personal, and then she sees it's not so much voting for a personality as it is voting for the person who's going to get the things done that matter for her. Right. Especially in education. You know, I think a lot of women are very frustrated with the um, lack of education for their, especially in educational choice. And then you have, you know, Betsy DeVos, who's out there talking about education choice. And so if we can connect what the, the woman would like or what the woman is concerned about to the actual policy, it, it draws mm -hmm. them in. Thank you both. Uh, Christy Burton-Brown and Kathleen Chandler, thanks for being here. Back in a moment.